The setup is a normal deck of cards. Now, here's a cross section of a normal deck of cards. And in case you don't play around with cards very much, let me tell you what's in the deck of cards. For starters, um, you've got all of these different values of cards. And most people are somewhat familiar with them. You can see it starts from an ace, which depending on the game you're playing is either worth a one or more than a king. Okay. Um, ace, two, three, four, all the way up to ten. And then you get these, um, these picture cards, jack, queen, king, in that order. Okay? Now, as you can see, if you replace the ace with a one, you've got ten numbers, and then three, I think they're also called court cards sometimes, because jack, queen, king, royal court, that kind of thing. So ten plus three, you've got thirteen cards, and then you've got four copies of those, because you can name them, right? What are our suits over here? There are four of them. Diamonds, hearts, spades, and clubs. Diamonds. Hearts, clubs, and spades. Okay? So what you get is the same 13 cards in diamonds, the same 13 in hearts, the same in clubs, the same in spades. So if you've got 13 different kinds of cards and four copies of all of them, then in total you've got... Good. So 4 times 13 is... 52. Okay. Now, you will notice that does not include a joker. Okay. For starters, no games that I actually know of, I mean, I'm sure they, are, they exist because jokers exist. No games that I know of actually rely on a joker. And secondly, whenever they say a standard deck of cards, they only mean these ones. Okay. So therefore, your sample space is always going to be 52. Sample space. All right. I hope I stored long enough now. Have a look at the first question. This is part A. It says, what's the probability of not drawing out a six of clubs? Are you looking at the same one as me? Yeah? Okay. This is uh, exercise AH question nine, part A. So how am I going to write this? Well, using this, um, this complement notation, I'm going to say the probability of a six of clubs, but I actually want it to be not a six of clubs, right? So I'm going to put my um, my complement sign over the top. Okay, does that make sense? So there's my probability, the six of clubs. Yes, yeah, stay with me, stay with me. So the first thing I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you if you listen, you'll find out. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice I could work out how many cards are not the six of clubs. But a much better way is to do this complement thing, right? So I'm going to use this line, or rather this line, okay? And I'm going to say the probability of not getting a six is six of clubs. Is one take away that probability? Okay? So that's fairly easy to work out. If you say, what's the probability of a six of clubs? Here are all your clubs in here, there's 13 of them, right, which I haven't, we haven't stuck up. And only one of them is a six, okay? This is a six of spades, this is a six of hearts, this is a six of diamonds. So none of them are the ones I'm interested in. There's only one in the entire deck. Make sense? So therefore, if there's only one in the whole deck, what's its probability? One on 52. Oh, so there's not a colour of each of them. I, yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention colour actually. You'll notice if you can squint hard enough because they're a bit small. Um, the diamonds and hearts are our red suits. Clubs and spades are our black suits. So they might ask, what about the probability of getting a red six? Which would be, well there are two red sixes aren't there. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there's only one six of clubs. So this is 51 on 52. Okay. Yeah. Like the Question? Is song. Why is like the ace of spades like really fancy? Fancy? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for that actually. You can find out for me. They are confusing. They are a bit weird. I love cards. This is the best invention we could have found. <laughs> best thing for slice of bread. Okay. Um, skip over B, because B's the same. Can you look at C for me? Can you look at C? Read it. Read C. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of a secret. Um, see the way I've set out this question on the board over there on the right hand side. Okay? When we're marking this thing, that number at the end, the 51 on 52, the part that's usually the most important, like the answer, okay? 
when you're doing questions like this in probability, that 51 on 52 is actually the least important part of the entire question. Because someone can guess 51 or 52, or you can get 51 or 52 the wrong way, this is the part that demonstrates understanding. Okay? So all of the effort should really be, I mean, this is just like when we were doing questions on like finance and that kind of thing. And it's like, look, tell me what's going on. Write something. Please don't just give me numbers. Now keep that in mind as you look at part C. It says, what's the probability of not getting an ace of diamonds or a king of diamonds? What's the probability of not getting an ace of diamonds or a king of diamonds? So this is part C. So please pay attention to the way that I write this. Okay? The probability of getting not an ace of diamonds or a king of diamonds. Yes, they do. I, I checked that. It does imply. It's, a, it's not always clear, but they do mean... Same suit. Okay, you're 11. Are you ready? This is where I begin. Look at how I've set things up on the board already. I've got a complement there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that complement using this thing. Okay. So I'm going to say that's one, take away the probability of it actually happening rather than not happening. Does that make sense? So this is the probability of ace of diamonds or king of diamonds. Okay. Now, please note, I put words in there. I don't put commas, I don't put slashes, that kind of thing, because that or tells me what to do in the next line. It tells me what to write. When I combine probabilities, like ace and king, do I add these or do I multiply them? I'm going to add, right? Because this this or this, they're separate events, right? So therefore, I'm going to write one, take away. Now, I'm going to put a big pair of brackets here because these two things are together. I'm subtracting both of them, OK? The probability of that ace plus the probability of the king. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, watch the brackets as well. An easy way to get this wrong is to say, oh, I had to add, right? There's a minus sign there, and then I'll put a plus sign. But if you don't have the brackets, it changes your answer completely. It changes to something quite unsettling, as we'll see in a second. OK, now I'm done. These are just two specific cards, and only one of each, just like with this one over here. right? So what is the probability of this and this added together? Two. Two, two on 52. It's probability, so it has to be a fraction. Um, I can simplify that, of course. 2 on 52 is... 1, 1, 1, 26. 26, okay. So if you take away a 26, that leaves behind 25, 26. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, just as a quick note, suppose up here, right, I had forgotten to include the brackets, right? What would happen? What would change? If I hadn't included these brackets, the next line would look like this. 1, take away... Here's the probability of getting the ace of diamonds. And then here's the probability of getting the king of diamonds. That's not right, is it? Because look, what's happened? These guys are just going to cancel with each other. And then somehow you've got that it's guaranteed you'll not get the ace of diamonds or the king of diamonds, which is clearly not true. Okay? Um, so well done for matching your way out of that. That's why things like the way you set it up and write the brackets, super, super important. Okay?